The G7 summit has officially kicked off here in Tromina, Italy, where G7 leaders, including the Canada Prime Minister, uh, the President uh, of the United States, and of course the UK Prime Minister Theresa May, as well as the Italian President, are expected to deliberate on issues affecting the globe. Uh, the European Union has taken the earliest opportunity to call for a united front among its member states if any global uh, challenges that are ranging from the climate change uh, to terrorism to the conflict in uh, Syria as well as Ukraine is to be addressed. Each day we are confronted with these strategic global problems that pose a threat to peace and security in Europe, in Asia and in the Middle East. From the war in Syria and Russian aggression in Ukraine to nuclear and ballistic missile tests in North Korea and land reclamation and militarization in the South China Sea. If our group is not determined and united enough, the situation in the world can really get out of hand. Speaking on the sidelines of the G7 summit in Tromenia, Italy, where President Uhuru Kenyatta is expected to address the summit, European Union President Donald Tusk and European Commission President Jean-Claude agreed that despite the G7 members having varied opinions on matters globally, there was need for members to reach a common ground and a consensus if global challenges that range from climate change, terrorism, conflict in Ukraine are to be addressed. As you can see behind me, security Security officers are keeping vigil in light to what uh, transpired in UK where more than 22 people perished in Manchester. Of course, the leaders who are meeting here in G7 summit are expected to discuss global terrorism as well as security matters. The G7 should also remain united when it comes to ending the brutality in Syria. We should be ready to increase our efforts to defeat terrorism in Syria and to find a political settlement. A special responsibility rests on the shoulders of those who, like Iran and Russia, have become involved in the crisis and cooperate with the Assad regime. Instead of wasting time, they should use their influence to enact a real ceasefire stop the use of chemical weapons and ensure safe and immediate humanitarian access to all the people in need. We, are com we will compare the way we do see uh, things and the way the Paris Agreement has to be implemented and the way they possibly um, could see these um, uh, problems. We do think that the Paris Agreement has to be implemented entirely and that's uh, the way we will discuss this issue uh, later today. President Uhuru Kenyatta is of course expected uh, to address the summit tomorrow, that is on Saturday. This is the very first summit he will be addressing at the G7. Kenya is critically important that uh, we've been recognized as the one of the countries right, that should be around the table, should be included in this, in this discussion. And we think it's a great honor and prestige and pre uh, we'll be having bilaterals, yes. We'll be having bilaterals with a number of countries. Uh, I think as of now, we have uh, three uh, bilaterals lined up and a fourth one, uh, which is uh, a work in progress. We have Japan, we have the EU, and we have Italy uh, lined up. We're also working uh, to see whether we can have a conversation with Canada. Uh, you know, so, yeah, so we'll be discussing all those uh, issues, funding issues, investment issues, peace and security issues, regional issues. President Uhuru Kenyatta is, of course, expected tomorrow to hold bilateral talks with Italian Prime Minister, Japan Prime Minister, as well as EU. Key on the agenda is to discuss matters regarding global terrorism, security issues, migration issue, especially the refugee crisis that has rocked Kenya, among other issues, as well as to increase funding on the Amisom mission. Reporting for KBC Channel 1 in Taumina, Sicily, Italy, I'm Linus Mwashirari.